Okay, so in this video we're going to have a look at a difficult question on iterations, or also called iterative process. Now in this video we are also going to involve some real life context and it's also involving some ratios and writing in the form n to 1, or in this question it's actually m to 1. So before we get started, if you want to pause the video and have a go at this question, please feel free to do so. But otherwise, I'm just going to show you how you can use this video to find more links and more questions related to this topic. OK, so when you're on one of these videos, if you click into the description and you scroll down in the description, you'll see right at the top there, you've got a video with the five hardest topics on paper three. If you scroll down a little bit further, you can download my checklists and practice booklets for this exam. Just below that, you'll have the whole series, obviously at the moment, this is the first one coming out, so it's not quite filled in yet, but you'll have the whole series of questions that I'm gonna be uploading in the lead up to the exam. Just below that, you have the series of exam revision videos. Obviously, we're focusing on paper three now, so we're gonna be looking at those paper three videos for foundation or higher. You can also find those in the playlists. So that's how we go about using this video, and right at the bottom, you'll see that for some of them, I'll put some timestamps in, but down the bottom there, you have topics featured in this video. So I'll link all the appropriate videos for this topic, or for whichever topic we're looking at, right inside the video. So hopefully that's useful and helpful, we've got a lot to get through, so let's get started. Okay, so looking at this question, it says at the start of day n, the total number of cells being used in the experiment is Tn. At the start of the next day, the number of cells being used in the experiment is Tn plus 1, where T with the n plus 1 is equal to k lots of T to the n, and k is a positive constant. So when we're looking at iterations, this tells us that to get the next number in our sequence, we multiply it by k. That tells us that k is a positive constant, and the fact that it says it's a constant gives us a hint here that k is going to be a fraction. So it says given that, and then we have our first value of t, which is 250,000, our third value of t is 490,000, and then it tells us that our seventh to the fourth value of t is equal to m to 1 as a ratio. Find the value of m and give your answer correct to three significant figures. Now if we think about our iterative formula here, all that we're doing is multiplying each value by k to get our next value. So to get that value of 490,000, we would have done 250,000 multiplied by k, and that would have given us our value for t2. We'd have then taken the answer for t2, and we'd have times that by k again, and that would give us our answer for t3. So in other words, all that we've actually done to get to that t3 is we've multiplied by k twice. And if we've multiplied by k twice, the other way that we could write that is we could just write it as k to the power of 2. So to get to that 490,000, we've done 250,000 multiplied by k squared, and that would equal 490,000. There we go. So using that, we can actually use this to solve for k. So to find the value of k, we would want to now divide both sides by 250,000. So I would have k squared, which is going to be equal to 490,000 divided by 250,000. That does actually simplify. It's probably going to be a little bit nice if we simplify that. So let's type that into the calculator. 490,000 over 250,000, press equals, and it just simplifies to 49 over 25. So that's just a little bit nicer for us to use. 49 over 25. So that's what k squared is equal to. Now if we want to find the value of k, then we just need to square root both sides. So k will be equal to the square root of 49 over 25. So if we just press square root answer on our calculator, it square roots it for us, although they are square numbers. So that quite nicely comes out as 7 over 5. We could write that as a decimal as well, or we could write it as 
Now, if you know multiply as well, multiplying by 1.4 just increases it by 40% every time. But essentially, that is just now our value of k. So our iterative formula, if we were to write it back up here, t with the n plus 1 is going to be equal to 1.4 lots of t with the n. So all we're going to do is multiply by 1.4 each time. So that's the main bit of working out that we needed. It now tells us that the seventh value of t and the fourth value of t are going to be in the ratio m to 1. So all we need to actually go and do is find the seventh value and the fourth value. So if we get rid of this working out, let's just move this to the side. We've not got a huge amount more working out to do. But now, if we just find our fourth value to start with, so that would just be our first value, 250,000, multiplied by the value of k, which is 1.4, and it's the fourth value, so we're going to do that to the power of 4. For the seventh value, we would do 250,000, multiplied by 1.4 to the power of 7. So let's just go and work those out. So 250,000 times 1.4 to the power of 4, and that gives us 960,400, so that's 960,400. Let's change that to a power of 7. So as a power of 7, this comes out as quite a long number, we've got 263, 337.6. So that is 2,635,337.6. So if we write that as a ratio, so the bigger number on the left, 2,635,337.6 to 960,400. That's not going to be the nicest number here to simplify. So what I would do at this point is I would type these in as a fraction. So I would just put 960,400 on the top and 2,635,000 and that number there on the bottom. And if you type that in as a fraction and press equals, it comes out as 125 over 343. So that tells us that this number on the left simplifies down to 343 and the number on the right simplifies down to 125. Now we have our ratio, but it's not written in the form m to 1. So if I want it in the form m to 1, then I need to divide both sides by 125, because that's what's going to give us a 1 on the left-hand side of the ratio. So if I divide both sides by 125, 343 divided by 125 becomes 2.744, so 2.744 to 1. So there we go, there's a nice trick using the calculator to simplify a ratio, particularly when it didn't look very nice. So now we have our ratio in the form m to 1, I just need to answer the question. It does say give your answer correct to three significant figures. So the third significant figure is that first 4, so if I was to chop it after that first 4, then m would be equal to 2.74. And there we go, that would be our final answer. Now, that's a really interesting question because there are different ways of approaching that. There are different ways of using the multiplier at the start and thinking about those values. So there are other ways that you could approach this. So if you have a different way, then please do leave a comment below and let me know your way of doing it. But there are about two ways that I could at least think of that you could approach this question slightly differently. But there is a nice method that I think would work for other similar questions like this and would kind of be a nice method to apply to different styles of questions too. So there we go. I hope that video was useful and helpful. If it was, don't forget to like, don't forget to comment, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one.